video 0601, in-depth modeling, extrusions. From your chapter six folder, open the file chapter six, modeling solid extrusion start. In this exercise, we're going to open three more views. So let's start with the reference level, the front view, and the left views. From your view tab and the windows panel, click on tile. This is going to enable us to see what's going on in each view as we create the model. And I'll be repeating this process for each of the subsequent exercises in this chapter. In each view, right click and zoom to fit. Although at the moment, in the 3D view, there's nothing to see. Notice how when you click on each view, that particular view is highlighted in your project browser. For this exercise, we're mostly going to concentrate on the reference level. To create the extrusion, we draw a two-dimensional profile and then extrude it through a vertical path. This extrusion can be done in any view, depending on where you have set your work plane. From the Create tab, click on Extrusion. You'll notice that the Modify Create tab has now been activated, so we have all of the modified tools and, highlighted in green, the tools we need to draw the sketch. Also notice that in the drawing area, the existing reference planes and dimensions are now displaying in a half tone. This allows us to trace over the top of them, but still be active when we want to do other tasks. We've already seen in previous exercises that any sketch created must be a fully enclosed sketch. It doesn't matter how many sides it has, it just needs to be a continuous line, or two continuous lines for that matter, but they must be fully enclosed and not cross over. An example of that will be one rectangle and another rectangle overlapping. If I try and finish this, Revit will give me a warning. It tells me lines cannot intersect each other. The highlighted lines currently intersect. I've got two options. I can either quit sketching, which means quitting the extrusion, or I can continue and fix the problem. Let's undo that and start again. I'm still in the Create Extrusion tool. And rather than use the rectangle, I'm going to use the pick line tool. After time, the use of these particular draw tools becomes almost second nature. No one of them is the right one or the wrong one. It just fits in with your particular workflow. The reason I'm using the pick line option is that from the options bar, I can select lock. This means that I don't have to remember to go back around and lock the lines to the reference planes because as I select each reference plane, the line is automatically locked to it. So let's do that with all four lines. I can't finish right now because these lines can't intersect each other. So I need to use one of the modified tools to extend or trim these lines. When you're picking these lines, it's very easy to click on a line twice. Revit does give you a warning, however. It says highlighted lines overlap. Lines may not form closed loops. So I'll still not be able to finish this until I get rid of the overlapping lines. There's two ways to do this. I can either use the undo tool, or I can come out of the line tool by selecting modify, and then dragging my cursor to create a crossing window over the two lines here. I can see from the filter that I've got two lines selected. Pressing the shift key down will remove one of those lines from the selection set. I can now press the delete key or delete from the modify tab. Now I'm ready to use the trim and extend to corner tool. On the status bar, Revit asks me to select the first line or wall to trim and extend, and I want to click on the parts that I want to keep. Now do it to the second line. I'll do that with the rest of the lines. And we're ready to finish our extrusion. Click on the big green tick. 
We can see that the model has been created in not just the 3D view, but the plan view and both of the elevations. We should be able to test this by clicking on family types and changing the dimensions to see if our geometry flexes. Let's change the length to 500, the height to 500, and the depth to 500. Click on Apply, and the length and the width change, but not the height. This is because we haven't associated the height of the extrusion with the top reference plane. Clicking on the front elevation and scrolling in, you can see that we've got the height here, but our extrusion doesn't meet it. We have two ways of joining these together. Click and drag the extrusion shape handle, or use the Align tool from the Modify tab. Click on my reference point and the top part of the extrusion. Make sure that they're locked. Now I can go and flex my dimensions again. Let's try the height, 1000. Click on Apply, and we can see that that's changed. Moving and resizing the dialog box allows me to also see the elevations. So let's try their dimensions. Click on Apply, and finally the depth. Let's try 250. I'll change the depth to 2 meters. And now let's take a look if we go back and edit our sketch, which we can do by selecting the extrusion and editing the extrusion. We're now presented with the sketch again. Here I'm just going to put a couple of arbitrary shapes inside our rectangle to see what happens. Click on Finish. I've changed my 3D view to shaded, and you can now see the sketch pattern has become a total extrusion with holes. These holes will always go all the way through the extrusion as they're part of the sketch. If we only want a partial penetration, we'll have to do something else, like using a void, and we'll be looking at voids in other exercises.